Okay, so today's video is going to be about um, partial fraction decomposition. And what we're going to do, we're going to start off by talking about um, partial fraction decomposition when the denominator of the rational expression factors into distinct linear factors. And also we're going to look at repeated linear factors. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, the first example that I'd like to look at is uh, an example where we have distinct linear factors. So t let's take a look at this example here. Um, the rational expression is going to be negative 2 divided by, and then on the bottom in the denominator, we're going to have 3x squared minus 5x and then plus 2. All right, so this is the rational expression we're going to look at. And we're going to want to decompose this rational expression into its partial fractions, all right? So the denominator of each one of my partial fractions is actually going to be uh, consisting of the factors of the polynomial in the denominator of the original rational expression. So looking at this rational expression, the first thing you actually want to do is you want to make sure that this rational expression represents a proper rational expression or a proper fraction by making sure the polynomial on top, which in this case we have this constant polynomial negative 2 of degree 0, we need to make sure that that has a smaller degree smaller degree than the polynomial in the denominator of the rational expression. And indeed, the denominator's degree is 2. It's a quadratic polynomial. So this is a proper fraction. So if it were not a proper fraction, we'd have to proceed with long division. And the long division would produce a polynomial plus a proper rational expression where the numerator and denominator fit the criteria I just gave. So once you've determined that it's a proper rational expression, the next thing you want to do is you want to go ahead and factor the denominator, because each one of the factors of denominator is going to be a denominator of our partial fraction decomposition. So this one isn't too bad. It's a quadratic. Quadratic is fairly easy to uh, factor directly. So we'll go ahead and we'll try to find two factors that when we multiply them together, we get uh, that polynomial. And I believe those factors are 3x um, minus 2 and x minus 1. So the first step is to factor your rational expression. All right. Now, like I just said, each one of those factors for my rational expression is going to be a denominator for the partial fraction. So the first denominator, 3x minus 2 of this partial fraction comes from that first factor. The numerator of this partial fraction could be any polynomial that has a degree less than 3x minus 2. So since 3x minus 2 has degree 1, the numerator of this partial fraction has to be degree 0, which means it's a constant. Since it's a constant, I'm just going to call it a because it's a constant that I don't know. So I'm going to let a represent the constant that goes on top of the first partial fraction. I'll put a plus sign, and I'm going to add my second partial fraction. The denominator of my second partial fraction is going to be x minus 1. And the numerator, once again, since this has to be a proper um, rational uh, expression, the numerator's degree has to be smaller than the uh, denominator's degree. I know that the numerator here is also a constant. I'll call that constant b. All right. So the single rational expression on the left side can be written, hopefully, as two different partial fractions, these two partial fractions, each having a denominator that is one of the factors of the original rational expression, and a numerator that uh, is a constant, since the denominators are both linear here. So my next goal is to solve for a and b. Okay. Now to solve for a and b, what we're going to do 
is we're going to go ahead and clear the fractions here. So to clear the fractions, we're going to multiply through by the least common denominator. In this case, the least common denominator is just the denominator of the um, rational expression that we started with. And that's always going to be the case. Whatever you have as the denominator over here will be the LCD. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to multiply each term by the LCD. So I'm going to multiply this first term by the LCD, 3x minus 2 times x minus 1, which is the LCD. And I'm going to multiply that by the original rational expression, clearing the fractions there. So I'm multiplying that by negative 2 over 3x minus 2 times x minus 1. OK, so that is the left-hand side. Now on the right-hand side, I actually have two um, terms. And I'm going to divide both, of, I mean, multiply both of those terms by the common denominator 3x minus 2 times x minus 1. So the first will be multiplied by the common denominator uh, a over 3x minus 2 is the first. I'm multiplying it by the red common denominator there. And plus, and my second term on the right hand side will also be multiplied by 3x uh, minus 2 times x minus 1. So I will get this, um, 3x minus 2 times x minus 1 times b over x minus 1. All right, so now what's going to happen here is the entire common denominator will cancel on the left side, leaving only the factor uh, negative 2. So the left-hand side becomes just a factor negative 2. The right-hand side, well, let's see. With this first term, the 3x minus 2 factor will cancel, leaving me the factor of a and the other factor of the LCD, which is x minus 1. And let's see now. Secondly, or lastly, I mean, we have this term over here in which x minus 1 as a factor cancels, leaving me the two factors b, so it's going to be plus, the plus sign in the middle, b, which is one of the factors that's left over, and the other factor that's left over is 3x minus 2. So I have this equation now. And this equation is beneficial because it does not have uh, any, or there are no denominators left over. So I have this denominator-less expression. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this equation, I mean, this equation to solve for a and b. And once I know what a and b are equal to, I can go back and uh, plug them in here, and I'll know exactly what the partial fraction decomposition is of my original rational expression. So let's see. Now, there are a couple ways of going about finding a and b. Um, as long as there are no irreducible quadratic factors in your denominator or repeated factors in your denominator, then this trick will work to find both, uh, to find all of your constants. And that trick is looking at each factor from the original denominator and asking what is the zero of that factor. So for instance, this first one, this factor right here, the zero for that factor is one. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to let x equal one I'm going to plug 1 in for all my x's in that equation, and I'm going to see what the result is. So let's see. On the left-hand side of that equation, I have a negative 2. No place to plug in an x. On the right-hand side, I have a times 1 minus 1, which is 0, but that was the whole point. Remember, 1 was a 0 of that factor, plus b times 3 times 1 minus 2. 
So I get this here. This this term right here just becomes zero. One minus one is zero. Zero times a is zero. So I get negative two is equal to, and this second term becomes, let's see, that's three times one is three, minus two is one. So I get one b, which tells me that b is equal to the number negative two. So there I have b, and now what I need is to find a. So I'm going to go to this factor right here of the original denominator, 3x minus 2. Remember, the original quadratic had these two uh, factors that I underlined in red and blue. And over here, I'm going to look at the zero of this factor. Now, that factor has a zero x equals 2 over 3. If you take 3x minus 2 and set it equal to 0 to find out what the 0 is, you find out that x is equal to 2 thirds. So I'm going to let x equal 2 over 3, and I'm going to plug that in. So once again, the left-hand side has nowhere to plug in any x's, so I have negative 2, and then that's equal to, and then the first term now is going to be a, and instead of x, I'm going to write two-thirds minus one. And then it's going to be plus b times, and then I'm going to have three, and instead of x, I'm going to write two-thirds, and this is going to be minus two, minus two. All right, so let's see what happens here. Well, the negative two is still just negative two. This a is going to be multiplied by 2 thirds minus 1. 2 thirds minus 1 is negative 1 third. So I get negative 1 third multiplied by a. And then this over here, well, let's see. 3 and 3 would cancel out. The 3 and the 3 would cancel, leaving me 2 minus 2. 2 minus 2 is 0, but remember that was a 0 for the polynomial, so we should have anticipated this being 0. And this term just goes away because it's b times 0. All right, well, in order to finish solving this for a, I can multiply both sides of my equal sign by negative 3. So this becomes a positive 6 on the left side. And on the right-hand side, negative 3 times negative 1 third is just 1. So I get that a is equal to 1. Now that I have the values for a and b, I can go back. And this was the partial fraction, what I anticipated my partial fractions would look like um, for my original rational expression. So all I have to do is plug in the values of a and b, and I will have found the partial fraction decomposition. So the original rational expression then is equal to what we have here is a, which we just found out to be 6, over 3x minus 2 plus b, which we just found out to be negative 2 over x minus 1. So what does that tell me? So that lets me know that my original um, rational expression, negative 2 over 3x squared uh, minus 5x plus 2, is actually equal to is actually equal to 6 over 3x minus 2 minus 2 over x minus 1 so there uh, you have it i have taken this rational expression and I've broken it down into its partial fraction decomposition. All right, if you wanted to check this, all you'd have to do is to subtract these two partial fractions, and you'd see that you would get this rational expression.